Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Sir Alex Ferguson Challenge with Sheffield United. In today's episode we are facing West Ham in the Premier League and we're also playing our final game of our Europa League group stage campaign against Panathinaikos. There's been a few fixtures since the last time we met, the first of which was the League Cup fourth round away of victory against West Ham. Sebastiano Esposito, Bella Kotchap and Amione with the goals for us and again we did dominate but it did go down to the wire. Next up was an away tie against Huddersfield in the Premier League, which we won 2-0. Esposito and Marcos Antonio with the goals. Renato Sanchez picking up an injury here, which knocked him out for a couple of games. Next up was our first game in the Europa League against Panathinaikos for the season, and we managed to scrape through them 2-1. Luca Pellegrini gave us the lead inside six minutes. Tilo Kerra scored the second in the eight, ooh, excuse me, 85th minute to give us the win. Away from home this time in the Premier League against a uh, struggling Fulham and we won 4-1. Danny Olmo back on the score sheet for us. Luca Pellegrini in own goal and Jean-Pierre. All the goals for us coming in the first half. Second half was pretty dull. They did get one goal back in the 80th minute but a comfortable victory in the end. And finally was a 3-0 home win against Rosenborg in the Europa League. Um, we played pretty rotated side for this one. Gubel starting up top getting two goals and Mariba our youngster who's still sitting, well he's not sitting in the under 23s anymore, he is being promoted to the senior squad. He didn't end up getting any loan offers that were reasonable in terms of his playing time. So I decided to keep him at the club, let him sit in the under 23s for a little bit before promoting him to the first team squad. And he, as you can see, he started a couple of games, well one game in the Premier League, one game in the Europa League and one game in the cup competition. He's came on a couple of times as a substitute as well. And he's doing pretty well, you know, he's on a lot of money for a breakthrough prospect. But um, for the sort of signing we're going for, it was a 225k. He looks like he's going to be an unbelievable player. So I will endeavour to give him as much game time as humanly possible. And that sees the Premier League table looking like this. We currently sit in second position, undefeated behind Arsenal. It's purely on goal scored at this stage. But we are level on points with Manchester City in third as well. Seems to be like a lot of the top teams this season are pulling away. In terms of the top four, you would imagine West Ham will eventually start dropping um, purely down to their playing squad. But we do play them today so we can sort of evaluate that as the game goes on. But um, I thought, you know, going undefeated in your first 12 games might give you a bit of breathing room in the top four. But we don't have one. If we do get beat, the, the chances are we would end up dropping out of the, at least going to fourth, but dropping out of the top four if we have a bad run of form. The Europa League campaign in the group stages went well. The only draw coming against Rosenborg winning four games on 13 points. So this final game does give us the opportunity to start some of our second string. You will see the likes of Mareba and Gubels or whatever his name is starting. So um, that's why I decided to bring you today's episode. But first of which is the Premier League and it is against high-flying West Ham. Renato Sanchez still injured for this one. He's going to be out for another two weeks. So this is how we're going to line up. Jack Butlin in goal. Kera, Batella and Onjin as our centre-backs. Dodo and Pellegrini as our wing-backs. Marcus Antonio and Danny Olmo in the centre of midfield. With Jean-Pierre in behind. Erling Haaland who's slowly coming back to form after his injury. And Esposito of course leading the line. Very, very defensive formation by West Ham playing five at the back with two defensive midfielders. My, we might find it difficult to break them down. And of course, they've got two tricky wingers in the midfield who might cause us some problems with our wing-backs bombing forward. But hopefully we'll be able to exploit this space that they are leaving, pushing the defensive line higher up and removing the opportunities for them to actually find the ball to Pablo Fornals, who is starting up top for them. We'll see how that goes anyway. They have performed supremely well this season, so it's going to be a difficult game either way. First highlight of the game, 40 seconds in. Erling Haaland in the box finds Dodo, comes out to Danny Olmo on the edge and Danny Olmo gets his third goal of the season. Dodo is credited with the assist pretty fortuitously. But we go 1-0 up against West Ham, their defensive line. Um, they're sitting pretty deep and the defensive midfield is obviously sitting in front but that gives us a lot of space to be able to retain possession in the midfield. And Danny Olmo does the business from the edge of the box. It's unlikely we're going to break them down in terms of getting in behind. But um, we don't need to if you've got uh, strikers of the bar like that, 1-0. Of course, West Ham have got our old boy John Egan in the defence. I sort of miss him being our backup, but uh, as a former Sunderland Academy graduate. But we'll continue with the game here. Danny Olmo finds Marcus Antonio, who gives the ball away. But look, no service to Pablo Fornals whatsoever. And they're not really pressing us either when we've got the ball. 
So hopefully we'll be able to dominate possession and dominate the rest of this match. We will go down to a positive team mentality from attacking Luca Pellegrini. Honestly, he's the bane of my existence with his injuries. We'll take him off at Ender Stevens as we go 2-0 up with Tilo. Kerra getting the goal, his third goal of the season. An assist from Danny Olmo from a corner. Another set-piece goal that add to the collection. And this was far too easy. Absolutely no man mark in there whatsoever from West Ham. Gives Tilo Kerra the space to finish that. And um, happy days, 2-0. Another highlight now, West Ham actually on the ball, this time coming forward. They have committed plenty of men forward and it looks like it's not going to pay off for them as they give the ball away to Jack Butland. They do win the ball back though with Doherty, Esposito getting all the way back, proving he's got the work rate up top to match our um, high pressing system as Marcus Antonio drives the ball forward from the centre of midfield, finding Dodo in a pocket of space. He goes back to Marcus Antonio. Decent cross now, Dodo. Come on, he plays it in early in Haaland's out the front post. I would have preferred if he played that back post, really. It was a difficult angle for Haaland to actually get it in. A corner for West Ham's played in. A foul to Pablo Fornals on the edge of the area. They play it all the way back. We are pushing them out, which might leave us open to a ball over the top. But, you know, it's a game worth playing um, because we end up winning the ball back after putting them under some pressure. It falls to Dodo. He cuts inside, beats his man, beats his other man as well. He's going to go for goal. You just know he's going to go for goal and he's never going to score. So only, five, only a couple of minutes to go in this first half. West Ham haven't changed their formation or their tactic whatsoever. You would think going in 2 0 down might warrant some changes, but it hasn't been done quite yet. And maybe it was a good decision by them as they come on the attack again with Garcia on the left hand side. Jack Butland can claim the ball though, and we snuff that one out. Another highlight now Philippe Anderson with a corner. It's cleared by. Marcus Antonio but West Ham are definitely coming into the game a little bit more in this second half only a few minutes in but um, it seems like the possession swing has gone more towards them and they are having the majority of the opportunities Yarmolenko now back to Doherty if we can win the ball back we can maybe spring a counter there we are Danny Olmo wins it and Erling Haaland brings it forwards and finds Esposito down this left flank if he can pull it back he can't I knew he was going to go for goal and it's such a difficult angle to score from there I don't know why the players are programmed to make that decision, but they do anyway. Danny Olmo with a corner. It's cleared, and that's that. 65 minutes in, we'll look to make a couple of changes. Danny Olmo's had a fantastic game, but um, we will look to protect him and bring on Mareba, who you'll see for the first time in a live comp playing in the centre of midfield. We'll save our final sub just in case of injury towards the back end of the game. But with only 20 minutes remaining, West Ham have moved to a more cautious system rather than defensive, but it's... They're not really off. They need to change things pretty drastically if they, to get back into this game. You'll see a change in the last 10 minutes, I think. Um, we'll keep an eye on it. The positive, I mean, they still haven't moved anybody forward. We'll, we'll look to make our final sub. Dodo typically coming off for George Baldock late in the game. We'll stick with this highlight, though. Mariba, long ball over the top, finds Erling Haaland, and he can't get his strike on target. There we are. There's the change from West Ham. They've got a 3-5-2 um, to try and get back into this game. It's probably a little bit too late now. But we'll see how it affects the outcome. Marcus Antonio on the ball. Finds George Baldock. A little through ball there for Erling Haaland. No, he keeps possession a bit too long. And Keane can get in there and get the challenge. And Kamara comes forward now for West Ham. Finds a jetty good challenge by us. Thought to win it back. We can't retain possession though. And it goes all the way back to Bettinelli in goal for West Ham. Long ball over the top. Okafor. Okafor with a strike. It was offside. Only three minutes to go. There is going to be one final highlight. Ender Stevens with the ball high up the pitch, throwing straight at a West Ham player, but thankfully it goes straight back to him. Mariba finds Marcus Antonio, who plays it back out. Ender Stevens, lovely through ball. Esposito was through. He was onside as well, and oh no, it was offside, so it wouldn't have counted. But um, you would have hoped for a better strike from Esposito. Oh, I wasn't even paying any attention. I thought it was just the final highlight continuing on because it's been going on for about two minutes. But we do actually score at the end of this. It was a long ball clearance by our defenders. Finding Esposito in a pocket of space. He beats his man. He manages to get the ball into Haaland on the penalty spot. And he buries it. Gets his third goal of the season. And puts us 3-0 up in this match. And there we have it. Sheffield United 3, West Ham United 0. A really, really good performance against a top side in the league. You know, you don't you don't sit in fifth position against the sort of teams we're up against unless you're a good side. Um, but their defensive formation definitely wasn't really working 
against us. And that win takes us back top of the Premier League. Arsenal must have drew the drew away from home against Norwich, which is an interesting result. Man City, though, keeping up um, the pace, they must have won wherever their result is. Um, but yeah, decent, decent stuff by us. In terms of the next episode, not the next episode, we've got Panathinaikos to play. <laughs> So here we are, the game that nearly never happened against Panathinaikos away from home in our final Europa League group game. Um, we are going to play a pretty heavily rotated side. Reykjavik comes in goal. Um, he is transfer listed by request. He's already unhappy with the amount of game time we've managed to give him, which is fair enough. We did sign him as an important player and he hasn't been. Jack Butland has retained his number one spot. Bruno Amione comes in at centre-back. He was the sign we made in January of last year just to bolster our options in defence. I don't like his forward determination, so it's not likely that he's going to get a lot of game time under me, but he's going to start today. Batella comes in at centre-back, our Italian centre-back, who we signed in the summer, who has improved quite nicely. Bella Coccia, our regular starter, he is looking absolutely wonderful. Three and a half star current, five star potential, 20 years old, still plenty of room for him to grow. George Baldock and Ender Stevens, the two old boys, are still here and are going to start today's game. Mariba comes in at centre of midfielder. He is definitely benefiting from the more game time he's getting in the first team squad. Daniel Olmo, John Pierre, Erling Haaland all start and Gibbles starts up top as well. We've got some of our heavy hitters like Kera, Onjean, Marcos Antonio, Esposito, Dodo, Luca Pellegrini all on the bench should they be required throughout the game. But um, I've got faith. I've got faith in some of the second stringers, particularly the likes of Mareba and uh, Gibbles. We'll definitely see some good stuff from them. We'll get the kick off. Let's kick off against Panathinaikos. Expecting a decent win, but um, was the last game 2 1? I can't even remember now. It might have been a little bit more difficult than I give it credit for, but. Hopefully we'll be able to seal out our Europa League group stage campaign with a convincing victory. We'll see how things go. With the first highlight, three minutes in, Panathinaikos pinched the ball in the midfield area. And they're keeping possession quite well. We're closing them down quickly, but not able to win the ball. Danny Olmo with a sliding challenge there, but it falls back into Panathinaikos' hands. Of course, Philly, uh, Makeda is leading the line for Panathinaikos, so we'll keep an eye on him. But we do win the ball back and Danny Olmo with a lovely little through ball for Erling Haaland who goes for goal. Decent save by the Panathinaikos keeper to keep things at nil nil. Another highlight now, Ender Stevens with a corner back post. Gibbles, come on. If anybody actually knows how to say his name in the comments, let me know. Because Gibbles doesn't sound right. Danny Olmo with a free kick, plays it in. It falls to Amionia in the box after a little bit of a clearance. Comes to Jean-Pierre, comes to Willem Gibbles. We'll call him Willem. Let's call him Willem. What a goal that was. Not really great, but good goal. Fourth goal of the season. Jean-Pierre accredited with the assist. It all comes from a free kick set piece by Danny Olmo. And we keep up the um, pressure as Jean-Pierre goes for goal. Hits the Panathinaikos defender. Willem follows it up. And we go 1-0 up inside. What was that? 17 minutes? Whatever it was. Mariba with a through ball this time. Finds Jean-Pierre in behind. Goes for the far post, but it goes a little bit wide. And it's a goal kick. 35 minutes in now and there is another highlight. Reykjavik with a big goal kick falls to the Panathinaikos midfield and they can work it forward quite nicely and they find it on the right-hand side. Ender Stevens manages to get rid though and Jean-Pierre is the first to latch onto the clearance and Erling Haaland picks up the pace. Batella switches the play to Baldock on this right-hand side. He gets past his man at the byline. The ball's played in and Willem is there to get his fifth goal of the season. He does seem to like the advanced forward role. I think the last time we played him in that role, he scored two goals. So he's got two goals again today. And he's definitely benefiting from um, having some uh, increased exposure to the first team. Particularly whilst Haaland's been out. But there we are, his fifth goal of the season. Another assist for George Baldock. He is just Mr. Reliable at that right wing back role. As is Ender Stevens at the left back. Um, another highlight now, 39 minutes in. It's all coming thick and fast in this first half. It is a through ball. Lovely little, oh, what? That was a good through ball by Panathinaikos, but it is going to be given offside, so it wasn't great. And that's going to be it for the first half. Panathinaikos nil, Sheffield United 2. Really, really good start by us. Uh, Willem leading the line quite admirably. Um, nobody really performing particularly well aside from him, but um, we'll see how the second half goes and hopefully we can see some better performances from the rest of the side. As we continue, Amionia, Amionia receiving the ball from uh, Reykjavik. But um, we give the ball away after heading it down a couple of times. And they've got an opportunity now in behind our defence. 
gets to the byline, goes for goal, as typically happens, and hits the side net. Ender Stevens is struggling a little bit out there at left wing back, so we will look to get Luca Pellegrini on. Um, he's returning from injury as well. He picked up a knock after the last game, but he was only out for a few days. So his match conditioning isn't perfect, but he's only got 15 minutes or so left to go. As he drives down this left-hand side with Pierce. the Panathinaikos players cannot kick. Oh, he's going to go for goal. <laughs> what's, what's the point? Stop showing me these. Another highlight now, Panathinaikos are playing it about nicely, but they give the ball away when they go for the killer pass, which seems to be a trend. And Amione can pick it up and find George Baldock on the right-hand side. He will get his head down and he will run all dear as Haaland finds Baldock once again on this right-hand side. As long as he doesn't shoot, we're all right. Pellegrini heads it down for Danny Olmo. Oh, what a goal that would have been. But it goes just past the post. Five minutes to go. Danny Olmo with a corner. It's played in. And David Patella, David Patella, gets the goal. to put us 3-0 up. His second goal of the season. He's done quite well when he's got the start at centre-back. You know, we've got four really top quality centre-backs now. So they don't always get game time. And my assistant manager typically tries to leave Patella out. But I think um, he has a longer-term future here than the likes of Tilo Kerra, who does want to leave the club constantly as soon as somebody comes in with an offer. We will look to make a couple of subs over for the final few minutes. Marcus Antonio coming on for Danny Ulmo. And we'll get Eddie Nicotia on for um, Erling Haaland up top. He hasn't really seen the light of deer in our squad, but he did sign as a fringe player, so he knows what he's getting himself in for. And there we are full-time. Panathinaikos nil, Sheffield United 3. A good little result to round out our Europa League group stage campaign. It means we avoid the Exeter and Champions League sides coming in the knockout phase of the Europa League. So we qualify top alongside Sport and Lisbon, qualifying in second position. Reims, Bayer Leverkusen, there's any big sides, Valencia are a big side, Schalke and Real Sociedad, especially Real Sociedad got the semi-finals last season, Frankfurt are decent, Man City finishing top of their qualifying group alongside ESC Milan. So there is some good sides in the Europa League this season and if we are to get to the final we'll have to be at our very, very best. But as you can see, we've got a big gap now. The Qatar World Cup will be happening and we've got a few friendlies arranged against it in Milan, Wolfsburg, Valdelaide, Blackburn and Hull. But um, looking forward to the next episode, it will be just before the uh, January transfer window against Manchester City. And a yet unknown club in the FA Cup third round, who could it be? But anyway, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.